So our old friends are at it again. <laughs> oh, we got you, Michael Moore. We got you, Thomas Paine. Got you. Got you, Jason Goodman. Oh, we got you, man. Oh, we got you trying to pull a scam, trying to pull a ripoff, trying to rip off the general public to believe your bullshit story. But we got you. We got you, man. Here we go. So there's a new article out in the True Pundit. You heard True Pundit. Let's introduce the characters first. And uh, we'll know who everybody is in this school play, in this psyop, in this LARP. In this LARP of Jen Moore, the Jen Moore murder mystery comes back again. But this time, there's a new contestant, a new player in the play, the school play. The boy, the boy who was raped by Bill Clinton. The boy who was raped by Bill Clinton. So I'll, I'll put all the pieces together for you. And uh, we'll, 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 uh, we'll dissect this and come out the other side and know if the story is true or is a complete fabrication, a complete stream of ass of the three gentlemen on the top row. Ah, let's find out for sure. So Jason Goodman of the Paranoid Crowdsource the Truth Community and the true pundit Michael Moore, who, is, who used to go by the name Thomas Paine, who pumps out stuff at the true pundit, pumps out 100 articles a day. He's like a stream. He's like a stream of news. Mr. Newsman, Thomas Paine. And uh, George Webb, George Webb, the infamous shaking hands DC reporter, George Webb, alcohol George with his crazy, crazy brother, Dave Acton. Dave Acton, the, the failed actor who sues people. <laughs> Can't make up the story. And Jen Moore, Jen Moore, the one who, she died. She was killed by Clinton. Clinton. She was killed by Bill Clinton. She was shot in the heart with, a, with, a, with an electric microwave gun in D.C. in a hotel room. You heard? Uh, fucking. <laughs> and the boy, the boy, I was raped. Bill Clinton fucked my ass on a boat. He cut my feet in a satanic ritual. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm not laughing at any of the, the absurdity of what could happen in, in uh, child rape. That's not what I'm making fun of. I'm making fun of a bunch of fools that are, in my view, are LARPing a very, very serious story, trying now to ride the coattails of the Jeffrey Epstein story, trying to take the story and pile it on the back of the Epstein investigation. See, the boy was raped by Bill Clinton. Let's push him into the FBI and get the FBI to include the boy's story that Jen Moore never was able to sell to the FBI and Michael Moore, who couldn't sell the story about the boy being fucked in the ass by Bill Clinton to the FBI, let's sell it now because, hey, listen, man, the FBI is out there asking for, asking for people to come forward. So, so let's look at, here's the, uh, here's the other players, here's the real players, here's, here's Bill Clinton with uh, with with uh, Bill Clinton and, and Trump and Michael Bloomberg, right? So Bill Clinton is the alleged here. So, so last night, uh, 20 hours ago, graphic warning, FBI interviews alleged boy rape victim of Bill Clinton, chilling details of sex assaults and satanic rituals on a yacht. Now, this, um, this story is not new. It's, uh, it's a regurgitation of a story that has been floating for about a year. Uh, Michael Moore, True Pundit, and uh, Jason Goodman tried to push this with George Webb, tried to push this story about a year ago. And that was the time when Jenny Moore, Jenny Moore died August, uh, August of 2000, I believe, 18. Yeah, she died in the summer of 2018. When did she die? I got the autopsy right here. So she died, um, yeah. She died 11, 11 7, 2018 I got the autopsy, right? So we'll talk about that. If there's anybody who knows anything whatsoever about the Jen Moore death, it's me. It's the, uh, the, the good Dr. John who follows our channel and has done an extensive report on the autopsy. So I, I'm an expert on this, right? I'm the, I'm the guy, man. They don't come to me when it's time to talk about it. Instead, they go to True Pundit and just spoo bullshit. So let's, uh, let's analyze the bullshit. So here's the article. Uh, because now, uh, uh, true pundit, Michael Moore, is now releasing the video of the kid. Now, don't get too excited, man. It's fucking, it's smudged face and, and altered voice. Smudged face, altered voice. Not true pundit, but 
or Jen Moore, you hear their voice, but you don't hear the boy, and you don't see his face. Uh, so child, child sex trafficking investigators from the FBI's New York field office, I'm going to tell you who Michael Moore is as well, because it's very important. FBI New York field office have conducted an interview with a victim who, who provided chilling details about alleged being raped by Bill Clinton on a yacht in New England when the victim was a young boy. That's not him. That's Adam Schiff. Uh, oh, look, you could buy, while you're here, you could buy Thomas Paine's T-shirt. You want to buy a T-shirt? That's what it's about, man. Sell shit. Buy shit. Click. Click. You want a pink one? You want a white one? You want a red one? Buy. Buy my shirt while you're here. We have, uh, we still have a job to do here, and that's what we're doing, one FBI official told this reporter. So the reporter is Michael, Michael Moore. That's his real name. And he gives no names of the FBI. Now, the FBI works in secret. To, find, to verify with the field office in New York FBI is impossible. You could call them. They're not going to give you any story. And Michael Moore has no contact with the FBI other than being on probation for, by the FBI for, for bootlegging hockey videos back in 2011. He was, he's a convicted felon hockey video scammer. Pirate video guy. That's who Michael Moore is. Uh, so the, the idea, first of all, the idea that Michael Moore has any connection with the FBI whatsoever is ridiculous. We still have a job to do. Like, bull fucking shit. Bull fucking shit. Where's the FBI guy that said it? You fucking liar. <laughs> the interview uh, and the allegations against... Cl I should be more objective, right? Fuck you. The, the interview... The interview and the allegations against Clinton are both detailed and disturbing. We have decided to publish the video of the victim's account in his own words, which contain ex explosive details of the alleged uh, assault and much more. Again, its, its account is, is graphic. Nonetheless, both I and the federal agents with knowledge of the case believe the victim is credible. No, no. You're, first of all, Michael Moore, Thomas Paine. 100% unequivocal, unequivocally uncredible, not credible. He's a, no fucking way is he credible, right? As far as the federal agent with knowledge of the case, without a name, there is no agent. It's a lie. It's a made up. This is propaganda. This is what propaganda looks like. Nonetheless, both I and the federal agent with knowledge of the case believe the victim is credible. Well, I don't believe you, Payne. Pain in my ass. To the FBI's credit, now he's, now he's crediting the FBI. The Bureau handled the victim with respect and dignity during the interview. Look, I could walk in right now with a boy on my arm and say, because of the, the heat of the Jeffrey Epstein um, uh, trial, the situation, the killing, the murder, the suicide, whatever it was, the investigation into uh, Jeffrey Epstein has opened the door for victims to walk into the FBI in New York in the field office and give testimony. Anybody, I mean, it's not, it's, it's not ridiculous to think that Payne may have walked the kid into the, to the FBI field office. But there's no media covering, covering this. There's no FBI investigation. There's no report by the FBI that it even happened. There's nothing in this case other than the testimony of the one Thomas Paine, Michael Moore, and a little bit of Jason Goodman of Crowdsource the Truth, although I haven't seen him spin the latest, but he did spin it in the past, and I'll show you where he spins it uh, with Michael Moore. There's no credibility to the story whatsoever, other than the testimony of Michael Moore on his stupid page. Right. Uh, but the road to this point was not without... Uh, intrigue and tragedy. I originally interviewed the victim with journalist Jen Moore, who provided the details against Bill Clinton and other elite pol politicians to child trafficking specialists in the DHS Department of Homeland Security and the FBI in July of 2018. Moore, an advocate who investigated abuse and child trafficking, had been in the process of investigating allegations by the 26-year-old man that as a boy he was sexually assaulted by Bill Clinton and pimped out at a private sex party uh, attended by D.C. elites. Wow. Now, the part of the story he fails to remember, or to bring out, is that George Webb was uh, Jen Moore's partner, 
And George Webb was in on this alleged uh, uh, interview with the boy and Jen Moore. So he, he, he deletes George Webb's name from the equation completely. But Moore and the traumatized victim wanted to contact Homeland Security and the FBI first to see if they would, they would open a criminal case against Clinton uh, prior to publicizing the claim. Four weeks after contacting the feds, Jen Moore was found death dead in her hotel room. Moore died of an apparent seizure. False. She died of, I got it right here. Jen Moore died of hypertensive cardiovascular disease. The manner of death was natural. Chronic alcoholism and a pacemaker. Thomas Paine doesn't know what he's talking about. I, there is no report, there is no indication whatsoever of Jen Moore dying of a seizure. That's a lie. Uh, so, died of a seizure, though her death remained suspicious and timing, and the timing beyond disturbing. Her death is really not suspicious unless you want to say that, that uh, George Webb killed her, or one of you assholes went in there and killed her to spin the story, or she just, she's just an old, out-of-shape lady that killed herself. Right? She, killed her. she, she, she died one day in a hotel room. There's really nothing suspicious anymore about it other than the, the creeps that are creeping around her. After Moore's death, the victim, fearful for his life, decided to not go public. So his indication here is that because Moore died, the victim suddenly got scared and ran into hiding and didn't want to go public. That's why they had to smear his face. It's just a fucking bullshit story. <laughs> now he is telling the story. And that is what he did for the FBI. While in New York City, the victim supplied intelligence to the federal agencies, including uh, conf confirmation that he witnessed other children on a party boat. These parties were attended by elite members of D.C. political class. Prior to Jenny Moore's death, I had, to, had a discussion with her in July that we should simply publish the allegations against Clinton without tipping off the feds. <coughs> The victim at the time agreed to use his full name and identity, and he said he believed he was prepared to handle any blowback. But Jen Moore said she wanted to work back channels and enticed the, the feds to volunteer, voluntarily interview the victim. She set out to do just that. It's a, it's a, first of all, it's a backwards way of doing an investigation. If they wanted feds to know about it, they would have released the, the interview of the boy, unsmeared with the public, and let people decide for themselves. People are not stupid. The ultimate plan was if federal agents did not pursue or investigate the victim's allegations, we would publish the details. Right. So here, let's, without further ado, here is the video. Now, here it is. It was, uh, initially this video was up on uh, True Pundit and, and crowdsourced the truth behind a paywall. You had to pay them like 10 bucks to watch the video for like a fucking, I don't know, about a half a year. Right? I never watched it. I'm not giving them fucking 10 cents. Forget about it. Right? So here's the video. I had, had reports. People told me, oh, you, the face is smeared and you can't hear the voice. So as far as I'm concerned, it's an actor. Right? But let's, let's listen, see if we can learn anything from this. Just so we're on the same page and there's no, what I plan on doing is, Contact the FBI, right? Yeah. If I can't find anybody worth a shit, then the that's the voice of uh, Thomas Paine. The FBI, I'm gonna try somebody in Homeland Security to come and talk to you. <clears throat> in the interim, I'm gonna work on this video. The parts that I like, I'm gonna cut up and put in one area, right? And then if they don't do anything, but the story with you, I'm going to do a story on it. We're not going to do anything right away because I want to give these guys an opportunity to talk to you. And if they talk to you, that's a story too, that they're talking to you. And This is this is, this is at the time when Thomas Paine was still pretending that he was somehow connected to the FBI in a covert way. Now, Thomas Paine has long been debunked. Thomas Paine is a, is a, is a, a charlatan what happened to you if they're not talking to you then that's a story as well they're not talking to you but this is what happened to you but if you know i just want to want you to know that when we do a story we'll have your name and everything and 
I'm not interested in doing something any other way when it comes to this because I think that it's the best way for you. I just prostituted. So. Bye. So here's here's him telling the story. Now you you get to see. There's no face. There's look. I'm a, I'm a person who makes video. If I wanted to make a video like this, I could find any idiot to just read off a script or tell a fake story. Some deadbeat, fake, you know, out of work actor. I'm not saying that's what he is, but that is what it appears to me. Unless there's further evidence. My great uncle and. I was led to believe that there were several other young boys in the adjacent rooms that were going to be taken to the top of the boat one at a time, starting with me. How old are you? Eight years old. So you were eight years old and all this stuff happened. When you first got on the... This is like a yacht situation. Yeah, yeah, it's like a luxury cruise ship. When you first get on the ship, what do you think is going to happen? You don't know, or I, I was just not aware. I it started this activity in my life when I was three or four. Let's jump ahead a little bit. I was taken into the ballroom. These people were marched diagonally through the room from one entrance at the other to get to the top of the boat, and they were all bleeding from their feet, and they had cuts from their chest to their abdomen. So you described some kind of satanic ritual. At some point, Payne asks him, did Bill Clinton rape you? Apparently he says yes. Uh, now, do you believe him? I don't know. Show me his face. Let me hear his real voice, and let me assess the, the video, because I don't believe anybody involved in this story at all. You, I'd have to believe Jason Goodman. I'd have to believe Thomas Paine. I'd have to believe George Webb. I sort of believe that Jenny Moore actually was trying to expose uh, child rape and child trafficking, but she was a victim of George Webb, George Webb the charlatan, George Webb the storyteller in Washington, D.C. Right, so her credibility isn't really that well. If you're hanging out with George Webb, Right? Where is your credibility? Where is your, your ability to assess a scam, uh, a con artist sitting in front of you, some kid with a wild fantasy, some 26-year-old kid telling sex stories about when he was a kid? That's all it is to me. I, you know what I mean? That's, all, that's, that's, that's what it appears to me. So I want you to let's reveal who Thomas Paine is for one second. I'm going to go brief. You can look at this. Go look at the video. Here's the here's the site. It's true pundit. Here you go, Thomas. That's what you wanted. You wanted clicks? All right. So go va watch the stupid video. And uh, while you're there, watch this. Uh, go to BuzzFeed.News, an article published uh, August 27, uh, 2018, about Thomas Paine. Notorious pro-Trump misinformation site, True Pundit, is run by an ex-journalist with a grudge against the FBI. <laughs> So this interview is done prior to Payne getting exposed, right? At this time, everybody thinks, even Jason Goodman to some degree, believes that Thomas Payne is somehow connected to the FBI. And we find out now how he's connected to the FBI. We found out in August. He was, he was a criminal. He was bootlegging videos uh, out of his garage, and the FBI caught him, and he got three years probation. He pleaded guilty. Days after former FBI lawyer Lisa Page testified in a closed-door meeting with the House Oversight, blah, 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 an explosive and false report about what she said, right? So the article cites anonymous, well-placed FBI sources. Does it sound familiar? He's doing it again, Thomas Paine. The article that, that, uh, that uh, BuzzFeed is citing cites well-placed FBI sources. In the last one, Thomas Paine said, high-level FBI inform agents. Right? He's doing it again. Right? Duclaim Page revealed that Chinese hackers had accessed Hillary Clinton's private servers. Right? So using anonymous sources, well-placed anonymous FBI agents. Why? Because he said so. Because I'm Thomas Paine and I say... I have a connection at the FBI. 
That's the whole thing. That's what he was exposed with his whole China bullshit hacker story. In response, Page's lawyers spoke publicly to say that the story was unequivocally false. Uh, um, and on and on and on. So, so here's BuzzFeed does a good job at citing three or four uh, instances where he gets where he gets caught, and it shows that he had seventy seven thousand Facebook engagements per article. Why? Because he was saying that that he was operating in secret. You didn't see his face, right? He was some secret agent with inside you know inside connections to the FBI. That's how he was parading himself, right? Who else do we know that does that? Uh, the bunch of charlatans that do that. The most uh, tweet engagement for the article uh, was generated by the owner of True Pundit who used the handle Thomas Paine and goes by the historic pseudonym Thomas Paine. He, he shared the link more than 25 times to his close to 200,000 followers, generating thousands of retweets and likes. So that's what he does. He retweets, he he all based on circumstantial evidence. I just told you the circumstantial evidence, right? The fact that Jenny Moore actually died, I have the toxicology report right here, died with Oxycontin in her system, signed by the autopsy uh, medical examiner, 49-year-old white female, Jenny Moore, died of hypertensive cardiovascular disease. The manner of death is considered natural. Chronic alcoholism and pacemaker use are considered additionally significant conditions in this woman's death. Right? So there's no indication that any way whatsoever that Jen Moore was murdered. Rather, it was a 50-year-old woman out of shape, drinking herself to death with George alcohol George Webb on her side. Right? So... And a, and a boy who appears to be an actor, a 26-year-old boy telling a story of, of rape. Oh, my God. Uh, without, we can't see his face. We can't hear his voice. We can't, we can't decide for ourselves. That's what we have. So, so since launching, launching in 2016, Thomas Paine, uh, true pundit, well, it yeah, has carved a unique niche among the new grifters, capitalizing on, I'm not calling him a grifter, BuzzFeed is calling him a grifter, right? So one of Payne's stories even led to uh, a, a mail exchange between the then FBI director, James Comey, and his former deputy, Andrew McCabe, right? Because, again, Payne was saying, I have connections to the FBI, right? So I want you to know who Payne is now, and we'll take a look, right? So they expose him, right? To get uh, answers, BuzzFeed News investigated Payne and his true pundit, social media accounts, businesses, and court records, and other publicly available information. They revealed that Thomas Payne is, in fact, Michael D. Moore, 51, a Pennsylvania man with a background in journalism, a criminal record as a result of an FBI investigation, and a long history of shady and illegal business practices. We just have to tell you who he is, that's all. all right, this is who the guy is. This is what the guy does. It's not like he was, you know, 19 years old and he smoked pot and got caught. He's, he's, he's actively charlataning and spinning these ridiculous stories. Just as Payne was publicly uh, stated, Moore won a Lobel uh, Award in 1996. Uh, he, he, he lied about his, um, his, uh, his, his, he lied about his winning an award. Somehow he was connected to Flight 800. Uh, what else? Uh, we, uh, and on and on and on. So Moore pleaded guilty to one, uh, one count of copyright infringement in 2013. He was sentenced to time served uh, of one day in prison, a year of house arrest, and three years of supervised release. During his release, he had to provide monthly income statements and facilitate the investigation of his financial dealings, according to a sentencing document follow, filed on June 17, 2013. So, so there you go. Fully exposed. We know who he is. Prior to the story, prior to approaching the boy and Jen Moore, Michael Moore pretended, Jen Moore, Michael Moore, were they related in some way? I don't know. That's still that's still out. We don't really know. But the fact is that Thomas Paine was this mysterious guy who claimed to be connected to the FBI. And now we know how he was connected to the FBI. 
he was under house arrest for a year and under uh, su surveillance. Uh, we're going to talk about this guy in a second, too. So, so there's the article. There's the players. Now, does, the, does, the, does it set in? Does it take root in the community when a guy like Thomas Paine spits it out and Jason Goodman spins it more? Oh, one other thing. There's other thing, right? So I'm connected to this story, right? They tried to say, remember when Jason Goodman stuffed the umbrella in my face at the Epstein trial? You remember the pink umbrella? He stuffed my, he stu I said hello to him and he attacked me with the pink umbrella. You remember that? Well, that day, at that time, Jason later, uh, maybe two hours later, Jason, when I crashed his set, Jason was on a call with this guy, fucking Michael Moore, right? There they were, scamming and scheming the whole thing, right? So... So the next day, after Jason attacks me with an umbrella, and then I go crash his set and tell him, motherfucker, I'm going to stick my boot up your ass, right? I, I didn't say that. I, I, you, know, you see what I said. It's in the video. Right? I called him, uh, you know, bottom and all that shit. Whatever. I got even with him. I fucking, I crashed his set because, because he smashed an umbrella in my face for saying hello, the motherfucker, right? So, so Thomas Paine, the next day, Jason Goodman is spinning the story that I, this reporter, is interfering with his investigation into, into Jeffrey Epstein, into Bill Clinton's rape. Fucking, like I'm working against. Listen to him in his own words. Five minutes to go, so I hope that people will make their way over to Patreon. This is a very good way for... Here's where he's trying to sell, they're trying to sell the video to people. This was back in July... Uh, July 2011, uh, uh, July 11, 2019. So a few months ago, they were trying to sell, sell the video to you. Watch the video. Come to Patreon. Come, you know, they were selling, literally selling you the fucking video like a movie. Right? For us to avoid the censorship that's happening on YouTube, the social engineering attacks that are happening on YouTube. So he's 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 implying that the social he he's on this this uh, notion of social media attacks that everybody's conspiring against him to stop him from from doing his very very important work of bullshitting the public. Uh, he's being exposed is what's happening, and he's they, they cover this is how they cover. Um, and also, why? What do you mean that YouTube doesn't want to see a video, a very important video of someone? Uh, so, so very, very newsable item. Put it out already. Why are you sitting on it for a year, Thomas Paine? YouTube. And Mike, this story has subjected both you and I to social engineering attacks. It happened yesterday on the street. So there's cyber stalking, there's stalking in real life, accosting me on the street, calling me names, coming up to me, antagonizing me. There's people who don't want this information out. That's the way it is. Welcome to journalism. <laughs> the long pause. You heard the long pause? Welcome to 2019. That's right. the way these people are out of control. People are talking uh, about James Comey's daughter. So you see, he corroborates the conspiracy against me. Uh, so that, that's true. Thank you, Mr. Conti. He, he corroborates. There's three of us. Look, there's all three of us now. Uh, so... So there is Jason Goodman the next day smearing me, hits me with an umbrella. Then when I go crash his set for hitting me with an umbrella, he, he, he then says that I'm holding back the story of Jen Moore, that I, this reporter, doesn't want the story to get out. How fucking ridiculous is that? So here's the pink umbrella story. It's really crazy. So here's what actually happened yesterday. I published a full video on it. You're, you're free to watch it. Who's going to pay who? Who's going to frame who? I'm walking along. I'm doing my, my show down by the court covering the Jeffrey Epstein case. It had nothing to do with anything that... I haven't spoke to Jason Goodman in, 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 in years, literally. I've never... I've only been... Well, that's a long story, but I've never actually spoken to him. So I'm, I'm walking along doing my show and he assaults me. Who? Now you got James Comey's daughter? <laughs> hey, look, it's Jason Goodman. It's Jason Goodman, everybody. Hey, Jason. Look, it's Jason. <laughs> Sorry. It's Jason uh, Goodman. So you remember the attacking story, Attacking right? me with an umbrella. Right? So you remember the story. Jason Goodman attacks me with an umbrella, and then 
clearly, right? He attacks me. And then when I try to crash his set, I'm crashing his set because I'm interfering with this fake story right here that wasn't even out. So let's finish by this. Do these stories take root? That's what I want to talk about. Now, here's Albert uh, Bechet. Albert Bechet was on this show uh, a while ago as a guest. I was asking him questions about his, um, his view on uh, QAnon. Right. Now, Albert is a, is a guy, he seems to be believe that everything is somehow satanic, and I, I don't want to get into it because I don't really follow the show. But here's Albert reading the story for the first time, right? because he doesn't know the background. And he's reading the story for the first time. He watches the video for 40 minutes or whatever it is, 30 minutes, and this is, what he, this is his assessment of what he's seeing. You're sitting there and you're thinking, Jesus, when is this going to end? Yeah. These people keep going, and I keep asking questions. And I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. I, I didn't. The video speaks for itself. Plan on this, or I planned on doing something after this, yeah. and then you have that in your head, right? That I just want to get the hell out of here because I have something else to do. Yeah. When you should probably be just focused on yeah. on that. So it's just throwing that out there. A couple of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the, that's Jed Moore, the female. He doesn't know who any of the players are. He doesn't know any background of the story whatsoever. So he's listening to it and he believes it. And, that, and that's another thing, you know, how she got arkansided in her hotel room. Uh, he's convinced that she was killed. Arkansas, meaning that Bill Clinton killed her. All right, so here's an investigative guy with 1,500, 1500 people watching or 220, 280 views, and he believes it. He's believing the story that Jen Moore was killed because of Bill Clinton, because Thomas Paine told him so. The point Weeks is after works. this. The point is that the story that Not quite works. a month after this interview they did with this guy. Jen Moore, and this journalist from, uh, what's his name? I'll find his name. I'll put it in there, from True Pundit. He has no idea who Thomas Paine is. He has no idea who Michael Moore is. He doesn't realize he's being scammed. So they're talking to this dude about how he was raped by Bill Clinton when he was eight years old. And, uh, funny how that happens, right? She th Three weeks later, she's dead. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Right? It's insane. It's insane. And and the Pence the Pence pedo stuff is uh is very interesting. Who is that YouTuber that was dying before our very eyes that, that kept accusing Pence of of raping children or raping him or I don't, I can't recall, but do you guys remember who I'm talking about? He apparently had like cancer and he was like, he was like dying <clears throat> in every video. He just looked paler and paler. And he was like, you know, a skeleton by, by the time he, he finally, it's, it's like a religion. You want to believe that Bill Clinton is an evil fuck. You want to believe that Bill Clinton is on the boat fucking children. But we don't have any we don't have any real evidence of it. We don't have an actual, you know, sighting of the twenty six times that, that Clinton apparently was on the Epstein Lolita Express. We still don't have one conclusive bit of evidence of a boy that was fucked in his ass by Bill Clinton, right? Or was or screwed a underage girl. Right? Nothing. Right? We need evidence. You have to have evidence. You can't just hang people without evidence. When he died, he was like Totally emaciated. Do you guys know who I'm talking about? Heartbreaking. No. <clears throat> Heartbreaking. So there is something to that. No doubt. Listen, <clears throat> we're, we are at the point, seriously, we are at the point where these stories and these accounts no longer shock me at all. It's what I have. Uh, uh, it's what I have come to expect. It is the norm.
not an aberration. It is commonplace. It's the standard. It's the def it's their default setting. Child rape is just part of it. And this goes back. This goes back. This goes back. Albert Pike, Aleister Crowley, all these Satanists love sodomy and they love to rape and torture children. And they like to do um, sacrificial rituals and the adrenochrome and all that other sick shit. And they consume uh, unspeakable things, bodily fluids, excrement. It's disgusting. It's completely disgusting, but they get off on it because it's abomination. Anything that's, that's an abomination in the eyes of God pleases Satan, and they want to please Satan, so they do the most horrible shit you can imagine. That's part of the whole thing. All right, so now we're clear on what the whole thing is, right? So thank you, Alex, uh, Albert, for your, in, for your input. Thank you for your fair use, fair use. So Mark Scotty reporting on this uh, latest um, discussed. <laughs> hey, listen, man, you got to call these guys out, right? Am I right in saying that you got to call them out? You can make up your own mind. Go watch the Michael Moore, you know, the, the child rape video and see for yourself. Is it an actor? Is it somebody? Oh, look, there's a lot of people in the world that are very delusional, right? And we can't just chase every, every crazy story down the pike, right? We have to have actual evidence of the story, right? Actual. Now, the, the guy, the kid has since been walked into the FBI. A year ago, the FBI didn't want the story because they didn't feel it was credible. They knew where the story was coming from, the, the crackpots that were spinning the thing. They weren't interested in the story. Now they they feel, probably they feel obligated the FBI to, to at least hear the kid out. All right, they take the deposition. The kid walks in. He tells a story. They turn the recorder on and they decide if they want to you know look at it. Right? Has anything happened? Has any? Is there any investigation? Is there any breaking news? Has one one other outlet other than True Pundit talked about it? Other than maybe his his lonely friend Jason Goodman? No. Uh, so, so total scam, total ripoff. I'm not buying it. Uh, you know, so, so that's my coverage. Uh, you know, Jen Moore, may she rest in peace. She's definitely dead. Uh, at the time they were spinning that story. She's not dead. That's not her body. She was shot with a heart gun. That's not her heart. Uh, all these, all these crazy stories. Where's George Webb? Uh, none of them, not a single one of them. They all pride themselves. That's the most revealing part of it is that Jason Goodman, uh, Thomas Paine, George Webb, uh, and the rest, are all, they all pride themselves in being extraordinary research journalists and investigative reporters, right? But not a single one of them, other than this reporter, actually looked into the death of Jen Moore, that actually looked at the autopsy and said, wait a minute, she wasn't shot with no fucking heart gun. She had a pacemaker. None of these idiots knew that she had a pacemaker. None of them knew that she was that she had uh, an enlarged heart, that she, that, she, um, that she was an alcoholic, that she, none of it. Nobody knew anything about it. Nobody knew that she had what appears to be track marks on her body, that she was strung out on, or at least taking Oxycontin to some degree. Nobody knew any of that stuff. How come they didn't know that? All they know is that, uh, that, a, a, month, uh, that uh, a month ago, a boy was interviewed. So... Make up your own mind. Uh, Marks Conte reporting.